What's up guys, my name is Ace, and something I've been hearing about quite a bit since the launch of Season 3 is the M16 feels like it got buffed. It seems like the recoil is a lot easier to control, and at least part of that would make sense because in the Season 3 update they mentioned they reduced visual recoil for many of the Modern Warfare 2 guns. In saying that though, some people were saying, I swear it's not just visual recoil, this actually has less recoil now after Season 3, despite the fact that in the patch notes there was no mention of a buff to the M16. So I decided to put this to the test, and it turns out those people were right. The M16 did get a hidden recoil buff, and it's not just for visual recoil, as we can see here. We have significantly less recoil with the M16 now in Season 3. And this suddenly makes this gun a whole lot more viable. Before this update, I really didn't even consider using this just because the other burst guns were more accurate and better all around. But now that this is much more accurate, I decided to break this down in a bit more detail and I wanted to share a great setup for you guys as well. Since I do consider the M16 to now be one of the better burst guns in this entire game. So diving in a little deeper, let's have a look at our damage profile, and with the M16, we deal the same amount of damage anywhere in the body, which means you don't have to worry about hitting the right multiplier or anything in order to get the best time to kill possible, you just need to hit your target, and it's going to be a 4-6 to six shot kill depending on our ranges. As for headshots, in that maximum damage range, if we mix two headshots in with a body shot, we can get a 3 shot kill, which means now a 1 burst kill for a really crazy time to kill potential that we'll look at in a little bit. Although I do want to be clear, it is pretty difficult to be hitting two out of three shots to the head while landing all three shots at least somewhere on the body, just due to how recoil works and when you factor movement in as well, it does make it quite difficult. I just wanted to point out that the potential is there for a one burst. Next, let's have a look at our rate of fire. This is 811 rounds per minute within each of the bursts, and then we have a burst delay of 80 milliseconds. And what this means is with a four shot kill, we're killing in 302 milliseconds, which is a little better than average for assault rifles. And you'll see in a little bit, this is noticeably better than the Modern Warfare 3 burst assault rifles. Also, like I said, if you manage to get that one burst kill by landing at least two of your three bullets to the head, we can get a time to kill potential of 148 milliseconds, which is insanely fast. But again, just a reminder, that's not going to be an easy thing to do. And generally speaking, I'm not going to bother trying for that. I'd much rather aim for consistency with those body shots. As for our ranges, our maximum damage range, where we have a solid time to kill potential, this extends out to 29 and a half meters, which compared to the DG-56, this is a really big improvement to our four shot kill potential. However, it doesn't quite match up to the FR-556. But then again, when we look at the time to kill potential, it's noticeably faster within this four shot kill range. Now, I also decided to throw the Holger 556 jack signal burst just to be thorough when it comes to assault rifles that can use a burst function. However, with that one, it is different than the others because it is a four burst assault rifle, and therefore we can get a really good time to kill potential with a one burst kill. However, it can also be pretty tricky to get a one burst kill with that jack signal burst, so that might be a little deceiving there. It's generally not going to actually be killing in 240 milliseconds, but it's got the potential for that. Another thing that's worth pointing out, a bit of a downside with the M16, is at the longer ranges, we do drop off to a six shot kill, which none of these other burst rifles will do. And therefore, if you are trying to challenge like extreme long range gunfights, you are going to be better off with the DG-56 or the FR-556, for instance. In saying that though, for 6v6, it's very easy to keep yourself within about 30 meters more often than not. And in those ranges, this is where I would say the M16 is now the best out of these options. Now that's about as deep as we're going to get with the M16. I'm not doing a full on gun guy here. Just wanted to show a basic comparison and some of the basic stats. However, I do also want to share what I consider to be one of the better balanced M16 setups that you can use in this game. So with this one, we're using the Zem 35 Compensator, the SL Skeletal Vertical Underbarrel, the High Grain Ammunition, so we can squeeze out as much range as possible, since range is very important with the M16, and it's nice to do anything we can to increase that a bit. We're also using the Sacken ZX Grip, and then finally the Jack Glassless Optic for a little bit of firing aim stability, because even though they have improved stats like that for the Modern Warfare 2 guns, they still tend to benefit pretty heavily from firing aim stability improvements, as well as gun kick improvements. And with this particular setup, you can see that we've really nicely taken care of that side-to-side -side bounce and any sort of horizontal recoil. It kicks very nicely, fairly straight up with just a tiny bit of side-to-side -side bounce. Within 30 meters, this should be very manageable, super accurate and easy to control. Our aim down sight speed is basically the same as the base. It's only two milliseconds slower. Our sprint out time is very nicely improved here. We do get a 15% boost to our range due to that high grain ammunition. And also our bullet velocity is boosted nicely. And overall, I played around with a bunch of different combinations, and this is the one that I just felt was best all around to get a nice balance of all of your stats. 
And if you do want to try out the M16 after this hidden buff that took place, definitely give this setup a shot. I think you'll be pretty impressed with it if you like burst guns. Now, at the end of the day, is this going to be like a top tier meta gun? Probably not. I would definitely still rather go with one of the many full auto guns in the game that are going to be killing very consistently. But if you want to play around with a burst assault rifle, in my opinion, at least for 6v6, this is currently your best option after this update. Now, of course, these are just my opinions, and I'd love to know what you guys think about the M16 after this hidden buff in those comments down below. For those of you guys that have tried it out, how are you feeling about it? Do you guys really enjoy the M16 now, or not so much? Just let me know down below. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.